Hi. We discuss p values. So we have two ways to test to implement the statistical testing. So one way is just use rejection region. So test the method one, the check if our test statistic, in our case, the t-statistic, falls in rejection region. And the second way is the compare p-value with our significance level, alpha. And the rule is always simple. Actually, the p-value is more than alpha, then we don't reject H0. P-value is less than alpha, we reject null hypothesis. And what's the p-value? Um, the p-value is the probability that a more extreme event than our sample happens under null hypothesis. So think about the two-sided test. H0 is mu is equal to mu0, and H1 is mu is equal, not equal to mu0. Then, suppose our test statistic is t, lowercase t, okay? And we have distribution of test statistic. Okay, so t sub n minus one. And suppose we observe the t here, okay? Then, our observation, our, I mean, our test statistic, our test statistic from sample. So test start from sample. And how extreme this situation is. We think about the probability that more extreme, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> Think about the probability that the more extreme event happens and under null hypothesis, then more extreme event is defined as test statistic falls in this area. So this area, the total of these two areas, this is called p-value. So p-value represents the probability that a more extreme event than our sample t happens under H0. So since our test idea, so t the statistical testing idea is that when t statistic fall, falls in extreme range under H0, then we reject H0. So that means, um, so actually, the, it, if the t test statistics falls in the alpha percent of extreme values, then we reject H0. So actually, by the definition of p-value and the idea of statistical testing, the, we reject H0 if on, and only if p-value is less than alpha. So if the, our test statistic is extreme enough, then we reject null hypothesis. So this is the idea of p-value. And p-value is different if alternative hypothesis is one-sided. So basic idea is that, okay, so suppose H1 is mu is larger than mu naught. Okay, so this, the second case. Then, Okay, so t distribution is here. So this is t sub n minus one. And okay, so alternative hypothesis is mu is larger than mu naught. So under alternative, the t statistic is likely to be large, right? So t statistic is x bar minus uh, mu naught divided by something. So if mu is larger than mu naught, x bar is likely to be larger than mu naught. So t is large. So that means, 
has a tendency, large value of T, basically this support H1. So this support H1. And the smaller value of um, T, so we support H0 as a tendency. Okay. Then what's the uh, you know rejection region should be, and what's the definition of extreme extreme values under H naught? Then that should be the right tail of this distribution. So if we have T statistic here, then P value should be larger than this value. So this is P value. For two-sided test, we also think about the negative side, the um, left tail, but the left tail is not really the extreme under H naught. So this would rather support H naught. So this should be defined as p-value. So it's a little different. And the third one, just that we flip the relationship um, between the center. So we omit this, but we can define p-value in the same way. So now one example. So mass PhD salary example. Now what's the um, p-value? And think about the two-sided test first. So H1 is mu is not equal to 79,500. Then p-value is both side of the test statistic. So remember that, that we have test statistic of negative Um, 0 0.9465, so around here, negative 0 0.946, okay. Then this is two-sided, so think about the, the other part also, and the total of this area and this area, this total is p-value. So this is actually, this probability of capital T is absolute value of capital T is larger than 0 0.946, and that is two times P of T is larger than 0 0.946. That means this area and uh, times two. And that is two times one minus uh, P of T, my, T is less than 0 0.9452. So I mean, the, this, this yellow area is not directly calculated from our function. So we think about the um, complement, then uh, we subtract this from one, then we multiply this by two, then we get the p-value. And that is actually equal to 0 0.38. So this p-value is larger than 0 0.05. So at 5% significance level, we reject null hypothesis. We do not reject null hypothesis. If significance level is even 10%, 0 0.1, still larger than um, 0.1, so we do not reject null hypothesis. And the below is the sample code, sample R code. So we calculate the sample size at first by length function, and the DF is n minus one, and capital. T is the test statistic. Actually, this is not recommended. Capital T is sometimes uh, reserved as the true T R O U E. So the, maybe we should say, I don't know, maybe capital T one or something. Then um, it avoids more errors. Okay, so mean minus our null hypothesis divided by standard deviation uh, divided by square root of n. Then the threshold is obtained by this QT function. So, mm, yeah, so this is, this determines the threshold value for rejection region. So this is this is 2.46, um, 2.446 or something. Yeah, and what's the p-value? The p-value is calculated based on this. So this is exactly actually the same as this. Right? So you can get the p-value of this. Okay, so we get the p-value manually from this.
So another example. So example, the hypertension data. So average systolic blood pressure of hypertension patients in a hospital is 162.6 millimeter Hg. Okay, so this is the sample average, so the um, X bar, kind of. And 10, pa 10 patients, so this is N, uh, in the hospital took the prescription and the, their blood pressure after four weeks are this. Okay. So, oh, sorry, um, this is the um, average blood pressure in the hospital, so this should be mu, this should be mu. And after the, the 10 patients, the, um, after prescription, that they measure the, um, the blood pressure again. So this is the, um, for small sample case. So uh, for 10 patients, after four weeks of the prescription, um, the average, the actually 10 observations are here. So maybe I, I will say this is X1 to X10. And from this, you can calculate X4. And test if the blood pressure decreased, decreased uh, significantly after uh, taking the prescription. So our null hypothesis is the um, mu is 162.6. So even after prescription, blood pressure does not change. And alternative hypothesis is it actually uh, decreased. Then we can use the t.test function uh, to implement this. So the data is here, x, x1 to x10. Then we can use the test, t dot test function and the data, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Uh, last, uh, last time we did not put anything, but the default is two-sided, but the here alternative hypothesis is less. So that means mu is less than 162.5. Then this is the test result, the T statistic negative 2.16. So actually it's a little lower than um, the 162.6. The X bar is a little lower than 162.6. And the P value is 0 0.02952. So actually this is less than 0 0.05, so if significance level is 5%, uh, that is standard number, um, we reject the null hypothesis that um, blood pressure does not change after um, prescription. So this drug um, may be useful significantly. So this is how to implement t.test um, in R. So we have studied one example for two-sided test and one example for one-sided test. And the, um, in general, in the R t dot test function, the, it gives p-value. So we have to use p-value to decide. It does not give the rejection region. 